Hi, my name is Julie Roca. Welcome to the podcast, Aging Gracefully with Julie Roca. Hearing is an important part of life. One of the five senses that I value as a musician. And without it, we're going to talk about some of the consequences of what happens without hearing as we age. So today I have brought on our show, Dr. Jagadish Swami. Did I say your name right? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. He is a board certified <laughs> audiologist and earned his doctorate in audiology right here at UF. In 2002, yeah. um, I know you studied audiology in India. So yeah. what brought you to the U.S. and what caused you to study audiology? Well, uh, uh, studying, well, I was born in India and uh, I did uh, my schooling, high schooling, all in the eastern part of India uh, near a place called Calcutta, which is now called Kolkata. Uh, but um, once I finished uh, my high school um I was visiting a cousin of mine, and uh, he said, hey, there's this course called Audiology and Speech Pathology, which was very new to India at that time. Ah. And that's how I ended up um, getting into audiology, speech pathology. And I uh, had no clue uh, what it was about <laughs> uh, until when we started. And uh, it was such a new field in India at that time. And it was amazing because most of the professors who were our you know, teaching us, yeah. had got their PhD from the U.S. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, so they had come back, and uh, they were very eager to start this program. And so we were one of the few early, um, uh, you know, schools, um, and um, it was amazing. That is uh, amazing. So basically, they were bringing this to India. At to the India, time. yes. Uh, That's so exciting. it was very, very new. Uh, it just been less than ten years or fifteen years. When you were on the ground floor. Uh, we're yes, we're on the ground floor, and then, uh, you know, and uh, and uh, in those days, the graduate undergraduate program was three years, uh, unlike now, which is four years. <laughs> yes. Uh, and it was an intense program. And um, it, it was uh, speech language pathology and audiology in at the undergraduate level, okay. and at the graduate level, it was also a double master. So you got your uh, master's uh, in speech language pathology okay. and a master's in audiology. Okay. Um, and then uh, what I did was I did my bachelor's in speech language pathology, uh, worked for uh, one year in India at a, in an uh, school, mm-hmm. and then. Uh, uh, helping hearing impaired students there. And then I uh, did my master's in linguistics uh, okay. and, and then came back uh, to my alma mater and uh, did my um, double master's in speech language pathology, audiology, okay. and worked in India after that. And in 1993, uh, um, um, I got an opportunity to uh, work in Middle East. So I went to Dubai. Okay. And I worked in Dubai at that time. Dubai was just coming up, and I was in a hospital. And 1994, I got an opportunity to come to Gainesville, Florida. Uh, there we are, 1994, the little Gainesville. <laughs> and uh, I came to Gainesville, loved it so much, and uh, I've been here since then, since okay. 1994. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, and it's interesting because. Uh, when I came in '94, the area code in Gainesville was 904. It was a Jackson. Yes, it was. It was a Jacksonville exchange. Yep. And now uh, it is. Uh, we got three by two. But anyway, so I worked at a place called Takachale, which was earlier mm-hmm. called Sunland Center, as a speech language pathologist. Once I got my green card, I came back to audiology and worked at a very big ENT practice here. And then while I was doing working there, I got my doctorate from the University of Florida. And, and so you're uh, a Gator. I'm yeah. a. Full time, orange and big blue. Fan, orange, bleed orange and blue. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, so, uh, and then I w- worked there until 2011. I started my own practice called Clear Sound Audiology, okay. uh, which is off of 16th um, yes. Avenue and 43rd Street. And that's near where the fresh that's where I know you from. Yeah, thank you, thank <laughs> you. And so, so, so up until that point, had you had a focus on any particular age group or were you just kind of helping so, all ages? Uh, well, when I was working with the ENT uh, group, uh, we helped uh, everyone, all age groups, mm-hmm. uh, from children to adults. Uh, it, it was a clinical diagnostic, uh, um, yeah, all, all uh, spectrum, age spectrum. 
Um, and then um, by about 2010, 2011, I was spending more time uh, with um, the elderly, the aging population. Yeah. And so um, I felt there was a big need for, um, you know, help in that area yeah. uh, with the right kind of technology to help um, that segment of the population. Um, and um, so I gravitated mm -hmm. toward that and uh, ended up uh, starting my own practice. Gotcha. Because um, research shows that hearing loss in our seniors has a huge effect on their quality of life. Yes. And you and I were talking a little earlier on their cognitive levels. Yes. So can we talk a little bit about that? So um, a lot of studies uh, for the past, I, I want to say uh, the emphasis started about 15 to 20 years ago, uh, uh, probably, and we had suspected that, uh, that uh, hearing has a huge impact on the quality of life. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of research done at John Hopkins and other big universities uh, started finding uh, that uh, there is a link. Uh, there's not a cause and effect, but there's a huge correlation between hearing loss and dementia yeah. and cognitive deficits. And uh, so they started doing research. And yes, uh, we uh, see that patients uh, who have hearing impairment tend to kind of isolate themselves, uh, you know, because mm -hmm. they're having such a hard time hearing, especially in a noisy environment, uh, they tend to avoid. And um, this population, uh, they find themselves withdrawing themselves from society. Well, you think about it, if you're in the middle of a group of people and they're talking all around you and Correct. you have no idea what they're saying Correct. or how you can participate back and forth, I have literally seen people in the middle of their party and they're sitting there and they're just looking either lost or they'll fall asleep because they right. have no idea no, right. how to enter that conversation Correct. that's going on around them that may be even about them, Correct. and that breaks my heart. Yes, and what happens is actually, so what it happens is it puts a lot of load, what you call mm -hmm. cognitive load, to the brain to process speech with a lot of background noise. The brain gets tired. Yeah, yes. Okay, yeah. and what happens after that is they stop following the conversation. Mm -hmm. It's just too much of an effort. Yeah. So the listening effort is so high, they get tired. And they either, uh, you will see them smiling and nodding their head. They have no idea uh, with yeah. a lot of noise. And yes. somebody may say, oh, well, my wife passed. They say, oh, nice to hear that, nice to hear that. They have no <laughs> idea what they're saying. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, funny and sad at the same it time. It is very sad. Yeah. And, uh, and as you rightly said, you will see them kind of lost. And uh, patients actually don't like it uh, to be in that situation right. because they find themselves asking people to repeat. And that's yeah. a kind of a telltale sign of, you know, how often are you asking people to repeat? Yeah. And that's when I kind of think that um, they should, uh, or family members will urge uh, uh, the parents or, you know, the significant other to say, honey, I think you need to get a hearing test because you're always asking me to repeat. Mm -hmm. uh, you're saying what all the time. Yes. Uh, and, um, <laughs> you know, so, and the TV is too loud. You know, the yes. television is too loud. Uh, you, as soon as a phone call comes in a noisy environment, you hand me over the phone. Uh, and I'm your translator. So you, when you go to a doctor's office or anywhere else, somebody tells you something and then you look at me to help you translate. So all these are kind of the signs and symptoms of, okay, we're having some hearing issues, serious hearing issues. Yeah, yeah. And I, that is that is what I see. And that is why a lot of times people will start to isolate themselves because they, they are tired. They're tired. They're... So then what is there available? I mean, we are in a very exciting time um, we don't necessarily have to have the uh, drugstore hearing aids anymore, right? Uh, you, right. Well, uh, no, there is, uh, so there is what we call over-the-counter um, hearing aids are available now. And uh, so they are typically designed for patients who have mild uh, hearing loss or mild hearing impairment. Okay. Uh, and some people pushed it to, okay, mild to moderate. And, and that's definitely... Uh, something um, we have been talking about also. And we actually, in our office, we do carry some of those over-the-counter hearing devices. Okay. Um, 
But a lot of times uh, what it is also recommended, if you look at the fine print, is you need to go definitely see an audiologist that's, or a hearing care professional before yes. you end up you know, that's what I was saying gonna that ask. you have a hearing problem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because sometimes I know I've heard you tell a story of a, a, a client that had basically just clogged ears. Impacted and, earwax. And impacted earwax. Correct. And that's a very fixable problem. Correct. So it's important to go and see a professional before you try to diagnose and Absolutely. fix it on your own. Absolutely. Yeah. Because this patient wanted to get hearing aids and I said, let me have a look in your ears. And when we <laughs> looked into our ears, voila, there's sure a lot enough. of wax. And uh, yeah. And uh, I have yet to hear from her back. So I hope she's doing well. Yes. And uh, so, uh, yeah. And, and it could be a, a myriad of other um uh, things too, like, you know, it could be ear infections, you know, yes. uh, have patients who have uh, had severe dermatitis, you know, a uh, lot of other issues which need medical attention. Yeah. So definitely we need to kind of think in those terms. And I hate to kind of drift off into, I want to hear more about what's kind of available and upcoming in technology, technology. but I think it is extremely important to talk about this, um, you know, I have a precious friend that um, went to a, a shooting range. Her hearing was fine. Mm -hmm. Her hearing wasn't fine by the time that she, she left. Yes. And because they didn't quite realize the urgency, they, you know, they got on sure. a waiting list to sure. see somebody a few weeks down the road. And now she has like extensive hearing loss. And actually, yeah. um, she may be somebody that you're seeing. I'm trying to figure out if it's you or, sure. or your partner. But um, so when you do have sudden hearing loss sure. like that, yeah. what should a person do? So the first thing, if there is a sudden hearing loss, is um, seek medical attention immediately. Like not be put on a waiting list for no, a few weeks you, down the road. And okay. so the magic phrase to use would be, okay. call your doctor's office and okay. tell them, I think I'm suffering from a sudden hearing loss. Happened yesterday and I cannot hear anything. Uh, I feel it needs urgent medical attention. So a lot of times either they will um, refer you to an ENT or they will call the ENT office and get you in mm -hmm. uh, because most uh, ear, nose and throat offices or primary care offices are aware of the urgency for sudden hearing loss. So okay. sudden hearing loss... Um, it could be just wax. It could be something, yes. uh, you know, traumatic, uh, but needs medical attention. And in most cases, if it is given in, uh, in a kind of, um, uh, there is a time window. Right. And yep. once you get into the time window, the chances of improvement is significantly better than yes. if you wait for like a month and go back. And I think that's the key is you've got to use those magic words of Correct. I've had sudden hearing loss. Correct. This is an emergency. I cannot wait to go see a specialist. Correct. I need to see someone right now. Correct. So and you I have had, advocate. And, and I have, yes. And I have had patients who just walk into an ENT office or, you know, mm -hmm. and if they call us and it has happened uh, and I had a friend um, two months ago had uh, had some hearing loss, but suffered more sudden loss and I was able to get them into a physician's office, uh, start the treatment and then follow up. And uh, they ended up uh, getting a lot of extensive medical treatment. Gotcha. Uh, and, uh, you know, um, we really, I think, uh, should call your primary care physician. Um, you can sometimes, I've seen patients even go to ER mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm. ER will send them to uh, okay. The ENT office. Okay. That's good to know. And those magic words are helpful. Correct. Correct. So I am very excited. I, I recently sat in um, a training session and heard some of the great stuff that uh, is coming out now. We are uh -huh. in this great time to live. Yeah. So can you share with us some of those things? Yeah. So technology in the hearing healthcare industry uh, has uh, really um, exploded. Um, there are, uh, so with, with the advent of computer technology and how computer technology is getting better and better, mm -hmm. uh, so the hearing aid industries are spending a lot of research dollars uh, trying to mimic uh, human ear, so the hearing instruments to kind of follow the yes, human ear. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, so we have hearing instruments uh, which are able to um, kind of track speech. Uh, the microphones are able to uh, automatically uh, what we call beam forming wherever the speech is. Um, wow. uh, it, it, it's um, fantastic technology. And the biggest, um, the number one complaint of most hearing instrument user is hearing in background noise. That is mm -hmm. the number yes. one complaint. So they say, I hear, but I don't understand. Yeah. That is the most common. So the hearing aid industry has been listening to that, and they're trying to focus on that, trying to make hearing aids better perform in noisy environments. Okay. Uh, and so that's where the technology pushes towards. And um, so uh, that is one level. And the other side is um, uh, we have come to rechargeable technology. So, Ooh, yeah, so awesome. a lot of very good rechargeable hearing aids, which last at least 14 to 15 hours a day. So you can take it out and just come back uh, at night and just put it in the case, the charging pods. Okay, okay. And that's amazing. Uh, and the other thing is connectivity with your smartphones. That is another big that thing. That was what yeah. really excites right. me. Right. And so connectivity is like you can get an um, you can get apps, uh, which is made by the manufacturer, mm -hmm. and they talk to your hearing devices. Uh, you can stream podcasts. You can stream yes, uh, yes. Uh, media content to your hearing aids. You can have a phone converse, conversation as um, hands-free. Uh, and then you can actually uh, do some uh, uh, programming. Uh, you can actually customize the hearing experience uh, for yourself. Mm -hmm. And you can mm -hmm. create your own program. So that's really exciting. That is very uh, exciting. I remember um, back in the COVID days, mm -hmm when uh, people were not able to uh, see their loved ones in person right. and they were sitting outside in, uh, in, in they were outside the windows sure. and you had your loved one inside and sure. maybe if they had cognitive disorder i sure. mean it was just impossible to communicate it was very hard. and now i realize if we had had more of that technology then yeah. we could have actually utilized that so that loved ones could talk to their loved ones inside the window Correct. and they could have heard it straight in their hearing sure. aids through a phone app and wow that yeah. would have been well would have made such a difference yeah the technology was there even then uh, is they have gotten better but a lot of people i know they did use it um, but having See. said that one of the things the biggest challenge during covid times was the mask Yes. The oh, that's mask a huge was pattern. a big challenge for, especially for hearing aid users, uh, because uh, you know there's a very little amount of real estate left. You know, let's say if somebody has um, severe COVID, they have um, oxygen going, they mm -hmm. have you know a lot of stuff in the this region, and yes. then you have a mask. Uh, if you wear glasses, then you have to space to have hearing aids. So there's not a lot of real estate left behind the ears, uh, uh, yeah, that's right? right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, every time somebody would take the mask out, it would, would catch the hearing aid oh, and the yes, hearing aid. So a lot of patients have actually lost hearing aids um, because of that. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. So and so there were new ways of you know um, making mask, uh, and so people were very very um, you know. A creative. A creative, yes. Well, and I think in your world, maybe a lot of people knew about the technology. In mine, yeah. people didn't know about the technology. Yeah. So that's part of the reason why I was so excited to have you come right. on today to yeah. hear some of that. And and it, even now, a uh, lot of uh, lot of our patient base, uh, they kind of get afraid of technology. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And what I encourage my patients is... Uh, uh, let's take it one day at a time, you know. We will introduce you technology uh, based on your comfort level, and yeah. when you feel more comfortable, we can take it to the next level. So, uh, because most of the hearing instruments nowadays are so automatic uh, that uh, really um, it automatically is adjusting to various acoustic environments. Gotcha. So really, uh, there's not a whole lot you need to do okay. once you program it appropriately, correctly. You don't have to do much. 
Well, and I wanted to, to add this because what I do for a living is to help people to find the appropriate housing situation for their seniors. So Correct. whether it's assisted living or memory support community or independent right. living. And as a staff member, um, we would help. We would help our residents to kind of make sure that those hearing pieces were in place because yep. it was so impactful. Mm-hmm. I had this wonderful lady. She was definitely one of my favorites. And at some point in her life, I think she loved to sing and she sang a lot. Okay. So she had hearing loss and she would regularly go to bed and with her hearing aids on. And then she would wake up in the morning and get herself dressed and come out and not have them. And she loved to sing uh, karaoke with me, but one of her favorite songs was um, You Gotta Get Up in the Morning, Mm -hmm. the Bugler song. So there's that verse, too, that a lot of people don't know about, and it's, Oh, How I Hate to Get Up in the Morning. Morning. And at the end of the song, it says something like, I'd like to kill the bugler instead. (laughs) And she was adorable, and she, without her hearing aids, would absolutely belt this song out oh, yes. all the time. She didn't know. She thought she was humming. Correct. And so everyone around her would get very bothered, yes. and I would go, and I would I would scramble underneath her bed find and that find her hearing aids, change out batteries, pop them in her ears, and she would say, oh, that's much better. Oh, yes. And then she would start to hum, and everybody oh. else around could enjoy, and she could enjoy, too. It's just a a darling little lady, but it really made me think, man, what an impact such a little instrument Device. had <laughs> in her life and in all of those around her. Right, right. So, and uh, again, uh, absolutely, because, you know, patients uh, or, or folks who have a hearing problem, uh, who have significant hearing loss, uh, who are struggling to communicate, just basic mm-hmm. things, you know? Yeah. And they can see their family members also kind of pull away from them because yeah. they're tired of repeating, you know? And they can sense it. Uh, so uh, it definitely, uh, we need to help them as much as we can. Now, every patient who has a hearing problem, there's no two hearing losses which are the same. I know. So, Which is why know, they need to go find... find Correct. A, a correct. good skilled audiologist. Correct, correct. So here in Gainesville, if someone lives in the Gainesville area, obviously they can come and see sure. you at Clear Sound Audiology sure. or your partner. Sure. Um, but what are some signs that people outside of Gainesville need to look for to find a good audiologist? What are some of the questions they should ask? So one of the things, so, uh, the good news with uh, technology is you have, uh, for everything, you have the internet. So typically Ooh. what uh, they would do is, <laughs> Uh, they would uh, go to their favorite search engine and they would put um, uh, audiologist or, you know, hearing gauge or something like that. Okay. And different things will uh, pop out. Uh, different names will come. Uh, and then, you know, uh, I would definitely recommend them uh, to s- talk to the primary care physicians first and mm-hmm. see yes. if the primary care physicians have some recommendations. That's a good okay. idea. That's, I think, a very good point to start is talk to your primary care physician. Uh, And a lot of them are seeing uh, maybe not physicians, but, you know, nurse practitioners or PAs. And that's fine, you know, Mm -hmm. and you can get some good information there. Talk to your friends, you know, who have had hearing aids, you know, and say, hey, uh, where did you get your hearing aids from, you know? Uh, so as we say, word of mouth recommendation yeah. is the best kind of recommendation. Yes, it is. So, <laughs> uh, so definitely look into that. And also, uh, the questions you have to ask is, okay, uh, does my insurance cover this, uh, mm. testing, you know, yes. does my insurance cover the cost of the hearing aids? And uh, does this office take insurance? Uh, so these are some basic questions. And when we try a technology, is there a trial period? You Do you get to try oh, them first? Oh, that's a great yeah. idea. Do you, yeah, do you get to try them first before you want to buy? Because good hearing aids can get expensive. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, w- what does it entail, you know? What should I anticipate mm-hmm. when I go to this appointment? So, okay. and a lot of uh, good clinics will have their website. A lot of good information is there. Okay. So definitely. Um, and some uh, some folks can directly access ear, nose, and throat physicians. So here we have uh, a few good practices here. 
uh, three at least four practices who have got ear, nose, and throat. And of course, you have the uh, Shans Hospital uh, yes. Department yeah. of EIT. Yeah. So uh, they're ve- all of them are very, very good folks. And the good news about Gainesville is we have got some very good, um, you know, uh, practitioners. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It, was there anything else that you want to leave with our um, viewers and listeners before we close out? So the biggest thing which I would uh, do is... Um, What I would recommend is uh, two things, two or three things. One is I recommend everyone uh, probably um, after age 35 and 40 because of all the noise exposure Uh, is to get a free baseline hearing test. Okay. Okay. Or uh, free if they get free or they can talk to their primary care and go somewhere. Get a baseline of the hearing testing so that uh, should their hearing change, we know what has happened. Ah, uh, that makes good sense. Correct? Yes, yeah. If somebody comes mm-hmm. and says, uh, I have sudden hearing loss, well, okay, but I don't know what your hearing right. was before this right. yep. event. So having that baseline is very important, especially if you have a known family history of hearing problems. Uh, okay. So definitely get a baseline. That's uh, Well, and uh, I'm like, I'm a musician, so, uh, you know, I, yeah. I, I played... My, I played an organ sure. as loudly as I could for many, Correct. many years. So Correct. it's probably a really good idea for me to do something like that. Correct. That's one. Later. And then <laughs> recognizing signs and symptoms of hearing difficulties, yeah. you know. So it could be like musicians. A lot of musicians, guess what they have? Ringing in the ears. Okay. Tinnitus. Uh, so that's a very well-known thing due to noise exposure or uh, patients who have been around uh, sports, loud sports. Yes. Uh, um, uh, uh, around, uh, you know, sports activity like uh, skeet shooting or hunting, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, ringing in the ears, you know, asking people to repeat. Um, uh, or uh, they have constant, uh, uh, like, drainage from the ears and they don't know why. They have been to different places, nothing has uh, stopped. So, you know, that is, I, we have seen some of those. Um, and asking people to repeat, you know, uh, yeah. yes. things like that. So to recognize that and to seek help, I think it's important. To talk to your primary care physician, seek help. Uh, and then, um, and, and of course, you can go on the internet and look for information. Uh, I would kind of go the medical route first before you do anything. Yeah, um, self-diagnosis sometimes co- isn't the best. Correct, correct. And there's so much of information out there. there How do you know what is the correct way or what is the right thing to do for you? Right. You know, for every yeah. person is different. So I think those are some of the things. Um, have Start the conversation, you know. It's never too late uh, to hear. I had a patient um, many years ago. Uh, she was turning 100 uh, wow. And the family was giving a big party, and she says, "Doctor Swami, I want to hear everything they tell my the gossip. I want to hear the oh, gossip." I love it. Uh, so she came <laughs> and said, "Get me the best hearing aid. You know, you know, I'm not going to take any money when I leave this place. So I want the best hearing aid." And uh, we fitted her with some nice hearing aids, and uh, she after after the event was over, I met her, and she was. What so gossip happy. Did she have that? Well, she she heard. <laughs> she said, "I did hear everything." So That's it was very inter- very nice. And you know, so there's. Um, I've had patients who have said that I have seen a big change in my husband after he got his hearing aids. He's now actually participating uh, during our dinner. Uh, you oh. Know. So he's no wow. longer sitting there and smiling. Now we have to be careful what we say because <laughs> he can actually he hear. Can, he can actually hear. Uh, so uh, it is amazing, and especially, and hearing loss can affect not only adults, you know, but it also affects children. Yes. And you know, and then that's another big area uh, where they have to go to through the pediatrician and get help uh, because they can have a very serious impact on their speech, language, and learning. Um, and all their development. Development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So. Well, this has been really fun for me. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Well, I, I need to have you back because we didn't even discuss, you know, you shouldn't put anything bigger in your elbow, in your, correct. In your well, ear. Yes. So I'm going to have to have Dr. Swami back on some, Thank you. at some other time. 
I just really appreciate your being here. Yeah, no, actually, I wanted to uh, take the time. Uh, uh, and really, honestly, I did not even know that such a, a, a program like yours existed till I met you. So <laughs> uh, you have been doing an amazing job, uh, you know. Uh, and uh, I think uh, getting good information for the aging population yeah. is very important. So okay? important. Yeah, and, and I yeah. think you're doing an amazing job. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. So I would appreciate it with that in mind if you would like, uh, subscribe, and then please share with your family and your friends and your loved ones so that they can um, be educated as well. And we have our uh, Clear Sound Audiology website and a lot of good um, helpful information that can always go. I will drop that yeah. down in the description. Thank you.